I just want to share my thoughts on sin that leads to death. Now, 1 John 5, 16 is a scripture that is literally stuck in my spirit, man, because of the imperfections that I'm struggling to overcome. Now, I'm going to read 1 John chapter 5, verse 16, and I'm going to also read verse 17. If any man see his brother sin, a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. 1 John 5.16 is a difficult scripture uh, to interpret, but I believe... This scripture is about believers who deliberately sins. The death that John was talking about is physical death. A believer who is aware of another believer sinning must pray that God will keep that believer alive in the earth and to do the work of the Lord. Now we don't know what sin leads to death and uh, what sin that doesn't lead to death, but we do know that the wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23 Now God is compassionate and patient with his children, which is beyond human comprehension, but God will not put up with a believer who has knowledge of his word, but is persistently uh, living a sinful lifestyle. If that believer does not repent and turn from sin, God will discipline that believer with some kind of difficulty, according to Proverbs 3.12 and Hebrews 12.6. Now, I just got to say that I have definitely been experiencing uh, God's discipline because I've been struggling with sin. You know, I mean, we all have. We've all sinned to come short of the glory of God. You know, and it's like whatever I'm going through, you know, I just I just, you know, always question myself, like, why am I going through this? Why am I going through that? You know, how come this is not working out? How come that is not working out? And, you know, I pray about it. And, you know, God lets me know that he's, you know, disciplining me, you know, so I, I just wanted to, to mention that. All right. If that believer refuses correction, then there will come a day. Yes, there will come a day when God will take that believer home by death because God can no longer allow that believer to keep living a lifestyle of sin. Doesn't that doesn't that sound kind of scary that, you know, God can just take your life you know just like that i mean but you know it's the believers that are just deliberately sinning you know carnal carnal christians you know i mean it's it's that's why it's not a good thing to be you know a carnal christian because you know you reap what you sow now some some people will say you know they when they hear something like that they will say is god a murderer absolutely not like I said, God is compassionate and he's patient with us, but his patience will run out. You know, God commands the church to be holy. First Peter 1 16. Now, if you read um, Acts, Acts chapter five, verses one through 11, it talks about a man named Ananias and his wife, Sapphira. Now, they were believers but they lied to the Holy Spirit and because of them lying to the Holy Spirit, I mean, they lied to uh, Peter, you know, because Peter was getting on them about, you know, lying. And so not only did they lie to man, but they lied to God. They lied to the Holy Spirit of God. And because of that, God just he, he took their lives. They dropped dead and they gave up the ghost, you know, right in front of Peter, you know, and that's. 
you know, but when you read that, you know, it's, you know, it's like a, a good example of, of why we shouldn't, you know, just deliberately sin because God can definitely take your life. You know, it's, it's a terrible thing to grieve the Holy Spirit, you know, and that's what they did. That's what Ananias and his wife Sapphira did, you know, because they lied to the Holy Ghost. So that's grieving the Holy Ghost and, you know, God took their lives, you know. So it's a terrible thing to grieve the Holy Spirit, you know, and the ways that you can grieve the Holy Spirit, which is in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 25 through 32. Now, God taking the life of a believer is judgment. It is definitely judgment. It's a, it's an individual uh, judgment, but it's not, and I repeat, it's not a salvation issue. God won't send that believer to the lake of fire, but that believer will end up losing rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. And that's not good either. But this is the thing. At times, God cleanses the church by removing those who deliberately disobeys him. So that's why it's extremely important to live a holy and righteous life for Christ.